And then I emailed your mother back and I said, not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Hey, hi, hello, hi, my name is Goose, I am very stoned, I am under the water, please help me. Although to be completely honest and entirely professional here, I have a secret that has to do with that. Spoiler alert. I'm always down. Anyway. Rashomon. Hello, I am Goose. This is my channel, Goose's Crackpot Theories. This is actually my second channel, weirdly enough. I wanted the main one to be more of a sort of business and lifestyle reaction and video games channel. And then I wanted this one to be more of a TV, movie, streaming coverage themed. <clears throat> so if you like any of those concepts, this uh, mouthpiece is upside down. Can't use the handle with this hand. Please feel free to subscribe to one or both of them and thank you very much let us continue so the madam web trailer got me kind of reeling i got like a swirling storm of theorized and ideas and stuff floating around up in a, it's it's up up in my brain and it's gotta like it's gotta come out okay. my head is swimming since there's you know a lot of time to pass since now and the next trailer there's only just a huge wide space for us to speculate in so let's do a little bit of that <clears throat> still haven't taken a sip of my water okay so here's the kind of hook of this one i think that not only is ezekiel sims not the villain of madam webb but i'm even gonna throw a little bonus twist in there and speculate that he might not even be the person in the evil spider-man suit who i have come to name dark spider I know that the second one's a bit of a stretch and it'd be hard to prove so early on in the process of theorizing about the plot of this movie, but let's talk about it anyway. So in order for my thoughts on Ezekiel Sims to make any sense, I'll have to give y'all a little bit of background on the Inheritors. In the Marvel comics, uh, Spider-Man is known as a totem. What is a totem, you ask? Thank you for asking. A totem is a mortal representative on Earth of the totemic god associated with that totem. So for an example, Spider-Man is the spider totem and represents the spider goddess. Uh, Black Panther is the panther totem, represents the panther goddess. Even Dog, uh, even Doc Ock is rumored to represent his own sinister totem variant, but that is a story for another time. Basically, if there's an animal-themed hero or villain, it can be mildly airtightly assumed that they are associated with a totem. Each universe has its own totems, and so each spider variant is its own spider totem. For some reason, the spiders are the only ones that canonically have the very specific ability to navigate the multiverse using something called the Web of Life and Destiny, which we saw represented in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, as well as Loki in both instances in a shape similar to Yggdrasil, the Tree of Life of Nordic myth. This group of vampire-like totems called the Inheritors, I'll let you guess their animal god, and it's not a bat, finds a way to access the web's home base, Loom World, and enslave the entity that manages the web called the Master Weaver. In the fight itself, one of the inheritors made a big ol' mistake and became the outcast and went about hunting down spider totems from across the multiverse to offer to his father in penance. It's a whole thing. He even wore an iron mask. At the same time, his siblings spread out to hunt down totems, both for sustenance and to fulfill a prophecy that we don't need to get into. I don't think the movies will get that far into it. Maybe they will. That would be pretty cool. Bottom line is that we have these sort of vampire dudes who suck the life force out of spider totems. In the Madam Web trailer, we see this spider dude character, dark spider, grab one of the spider ladies by the neck, and we see these weird disease visual effects creep over her face. So this brings up two possibilities. Mo -wa -wa. One is that Madam Web is seeing these visions of a bad guy, Dark Spider, in a spider suit, attacking these spider ladies, and then snaps back into the moment and sees Ezekiel coming onto the scene being all menacing. And in the train car, we even see him attacking one of the spider ladies. So either he's trying to kill the spider totems so that the real guy, real bad guys can't get at them, or because maybe he's misinterpreted his own visions of the future, or he's actually there to warn 
warn them and the visions of them dying that Cassandra is seeing are actually other simultaneous universes and timelines. In this scenario, the scenes that we see in the trailer of them battling in the future with old Ezekiel could also be a red herring where he's actually mentoring them instead of fighting them and showing them how to navigate the web using Spider-Woman's spirit web, which long story also. He could be there to do the exact same thing as Cassandra, save them, or he could be there to kill them before the dark spider could suck out their life essence. Uh, who knows? I welcome your thoughts on the matter. The other possibility could be that he's replacing the character Karn, who is the inheritor that made the big old mistake and became the outcast. Uh, in the Spider Totem Wars story, which in truth would be kind of cool. It just removes an arguably useless character in Karn and makes the guy who warned Spider-Man about the Inheritors, Ezekiel, more central to the plot and gives us kind of a nice twist, making him an Inheritor himself instead of a fellow Spider Totem, which would be fine because in the comics he doesn't have a definitive origin and the Spider-Verse is over, I believe. So this guy who may seem evil now could be redeemed and become the Master Weaver himself or sacrifice himself to beat the ultimate bad guy, you know, whoever that ends up being. Even taking the place of uh, Kane or the other, which would explain the suit because it looks very similar to Kane's suit. He could start out morally gray, thinking that killing the totems is what needs to happen and be convinced to turn good because it was this setup of spider women that actually convinced Karn to turn good in the comics, or could be revealed to have not been in charge in the first place and then we would probably see more Lun or a different inheritor. Honestly, any of these scenarios would be great. But in the end, I don't think we're going to get anything so complicated as Cassandra or Madame Web seeing the entire multiverse all at the same time. I think she's probably actually seeing visions of Ezekiel in a dark spider suit. And I think he's just probably not going to turn out to be as evil as we think. So I think in all possibilities, it'll be more like the second scenario, since we don't have a bunch of lead up time to introduce all of these characters. Characters, and we already have a team of writers with its work cut out for it, needing to craft this entire Spider-Verse arc without being able to really feature Spider-Man in every entry, which feels weird considering the fact that Peter Parker and his family are central to the web of life and destiny. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. It'll be interesting to see how this movie plays out. And I'm looking forward to doing uh, more theorizing and more planning and more, you know, lore stuff and explanations and things like that. Yeah. If you liked what you saw and heard, then uh, please do me a huge favor and subscribe and like and yada yada yada. I'm trying to do as little extraneous promotion as possible so I can really kind of grassroots this and get a firm foundation. I'm a nice guy, you know, because I'm a cool dude. So if you are watching to the very end, I appreciate it. Just know that you are loved and someone cares about you and that you are worth something in this world. And I want to thank you sincerely for watching. And if you go back and watch other videos I do, thank you as well. That's about all I got for it.